how does faith impact recovery? We call ourselves a uh, faith-based organization. That means different things to different people, of course. But we really do separate ourselves from clinical programs, which would be uh, more you know, psychological or those types of therapies, maybe medical in terms of medication and other things. Um, we're not that, we're not against that, but we're not that. We are a faith-based program, meaning we approach trauma and trial and you know, life's obstacles and the brokenness from a position of faith. So the question is, how does faith impact recovery? I think this is something a lot of people um, are confused about. Not why should I be a Christian, not you know those questions, but how specifically does faith impact recovery? So I have fallen on my face, uh, I am hurt, how does faith get me back to the place I need to be? The first thing I'll say before I answer your question is I'll go back to the fact that you said uh, we're not against clinical, we're not against uh, medication. Uh, those place, those things do have a place. I believe in your recovery plan, if the only thing in your recovery plan is medication, then it's a bad plan. Right. Uh, there have to be other things on top of that. And of those other things, what I've witnessed in the 10 years of doing this, including my own personal story, and in 10 years of helping other people, what I've seen of those other things, the most effective has been uh, faith-based solutions. And, and so to answer your question of what we mean by faith-based solutions, uh, for me, it's, it's believing in something bigger than yourself yeah. and, and, uh, and having a set of uh, principles to align to. Um, you and I are both Christians. Uh, we believe the, the Christian Bible, the Holy Bible, is the blueprint, the blueprint for living. And so for me, when I begin to uh, move into a relationship with Christ and cal- I would say calibrate my life to the life I believe I've cr- I was created to live, my problems didn't go away. My hardships, my past didn't go away. I didn't go back and erase the bad things that happened in my life. But what I was able to do is as I face these problems, as I face these moments of anxiety, depression, I, I, I had a model in which to make decisions off of in which yeah. to, and I had principles in which to align my life to. And by intentionally doing that, my life ended up in a, in a better place because those were, I was making better decisions. And, um, you know, that's getting out of sight of the spiritual, the spiritual realm of, of that. Just the, I'm just talking about the kind of meat and potatoes decision-making that comes off of living out and actually living out a life of faith right. and the difference it makes to someone trying to overcome trauma. Yeah, that's good. Um, you know, we talk about the, the clinical versus the faith-based. Uh, I always describe it as a, a clinician, someone in the medical community, uh, you know, in the clinical community would say, well, we need to start with medication. We need to start with therapies and then work from there. And if there are other tools that are helpful along the way, we can add them. And maybe one of those tools is faith we would go the other direction. We would say, you need to start with faith, and there are probably other tools along the way that might be helpful, but the foundation has to be faith. It's, it's all about starting point to me, and I think, you know, as you mentioned, if you start with medication, then what's, what's the end point? Where do you go, <laughs> where do you go from there? That's the, that's the whole game, right? Um, and so it really is about a starting point, and we start from faith and say, you need to have this first. Because if you don't have that foundation, I had this conversation with someone recently uh, who had been a firefighter and was not a Christian during his time in the fire service, uh, came to a critical moment where he tried to take his life, came into a relationship with Christ. And we were talking about framing and context. Um, if you're not a person of faith, you know, even broadly, there's no context to process the things that you're going through. So you see a tragedy, you encounter something difficult, your relationship isn't right, whatever it is, if you don't believe there's something transcendent, something bigger than you and your situation, uh, why would you not fall into despair and and, and uh, that darkness that overcomes so many people? You don't have anything else. It's the context that comes from knowing there is a God, He does have a plan, his plan is personal for me. He has a path that he wants me to follow. What I'm dealing with is not all there is. I'm not hopeless because there's something outside of myself. And Frankly, I, I don't know how anybody can function in the world as it is today right. without yeah. without understanding that we have a God that's in control yeah. of everything. I mean, and that's exactly right. I, and I I think when you talk about you know how does faith impact recovery? Uh, well, it gives you a perspective that allows you to see the world where you're not the center of it. (laughs) Uh, I'm not the center of the world. God is. um, I'm not. 
And since I'm not, then my frailties and my, uh, my failings and my issues are not all there is. There's something much bigger and much more. Um, I say something. God is bigger. He is in control and he has a plan. Yeah, I don't know how you go through the world the way it is and look around and go, well, there's no God. I think another thing when you're in despair and I've, you know, I've spent many, many years of my life in despair, uh, without God, you feel like your, your, uh, your life, your future, your sanity, like everything's in your hands. Right. And, uh, and it's, it's up to you for it to make or break yeah. it. And, uh, and deep down when we're in those moments, we don't feel capable. And so just, uh, to come to the understanding that, my life, my, my, my sanity, my health, my eternity is not in my hands. It's in, it's in God's hands, which is a much better place than in my own hands. Yeah. Uh, there's just such a peace and comfort that comes from, from the, that, that revelation in someone's life. Yeah. It's crazy because the most <clears throat> capable person, I, we say this in one of our classes during the program that uh, everyone is, is insecure inside or every man is insecure. I forget exactly how the quote yeah. goes. Um, but it's true, you look at the person that seems the most capable, on the inside, they know who they are, and yeah. they know where their insecurities are, they know the things that they're afraid of, the things they're hiding from people. And if I have to be in control of everything, I'm only as good as who I am, and, and I know the truth. I know I can't control my relationships, and I can't control what's happening in the world, and, and uh, faith really is, exactly as you described it, it's understanding, I don't have to be in control. You know, God has a plan and it's bigger than me. And there's a, a tremendous amount of peace and comfort that comes from that. And that, that's, that's when we talk about something like PTSD or, or panic disorder, anxiety, that's, that knowledge is, is healing in itself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's the, the transcendence of God is um, man, probably the most comforting thing we have is, is knowing he's bigger, than, he's bigger than all this. He's not worried about it. <laughs>